Hi, I'm Jo from Joe's Country Junction. Welcome to my sewing room. I am working on my free form alphabet letters again today. Um, I had a wonderful viewer suggest that I hang up the quilts behind me. And so that's what I've done. I don't know that you can see the whole thing, but it'll give you a clue here about how the alphabet goes around the border. And you can see kind of what the inside of the quilt is gonna look like. So I did that. I appreciate suggestions so much. And if you leave a suggestion or comment, I read all of them and I really, really appreciate them because I'm new at this and I don't really know what I'm doing. So if you as the viewer can um, give me some tips or tricks, I really appreciate that and I take them into consideration as I do the next videos. So we did our, so far we have A, B, C, D. And if you're new and you're just picking up this video for the first time, I highly suggest you go back and watch the first video so you can see how to do those letters. And then after that, I did a second video and we did E, uh, let me think, they're stuck here. Let's see if I can get them. F, G, H, and I. And that was the second video I did. And the third video was J, oh, these are mixed up, K, L, and M. So we have that many letters done. That means if we're to M and there's 26 letters in the alphabet, that means if we're to M, we have 13 done and we're ready to go on to the next segment of the next section of letters to do. And so the letter that we're gonna start with today is N. I already have the pieces here on my felt board ready to go. Um, you can see that um, the inside piece, basically if you cut a rectangle and then cut it on the diagonal and add the piece in the center, that's how you get that look or that, that um, slant for the end. So that was just a rectangle cut on the diagonal and then a red piece put in the middle. Like we always do and how I've talked about, we're gonna start in the middle we're going to put these middle things together, then we're going to put the sides, and then we're going to put the top and bottom on, and we'll have an end ready to go. Yahoo! We're going to start out and get a letter done right away. And I'm here at my old 1591 Singer sewing machine again. And I'm really excited to be getting going on this. I had a, one of my blog readers, for those of you who are just catching YouTube only and don't know, I'm a blogger. I blog at joescountryjunction.com and I have a wonderful group of blog readers and one of them sent me some uh, shirt scraps and so I'm going to be incorpor incorporating some of this into my quilt because that's one of the scraps that she sent me, which I so very much appreciate. Okay, well, now we're here, and we don't want to put this up here. We want to match that so we get back to a rectangle shape. And this will be cut off, and that will be cut off down there. But we want to line that up so we kind of have more of a rectangle shape once we get it so done. An N can be a little bit tricky because it's hard to orient yourself. Whoops, I couldn't get that cut. Orient yourself to get the diagonal of the N the right way. So I'm going to take just a second here and make sure I do that. I'm going to trim off these extra pieces. Um, when you cut the diagonal strip, the red one, make sure that it's extra long because that's really easy for it to be too short. So I just purposely cut it extra long. Okay. So here's what I have. And so I'm reminding myself an end goes up, down, up. But you got to be careful not to do it the opposite way. So anyway, okay, here we go. And I'm going to put my end piece on or my next piece on. I'm actually going to trim this a little bit. Um, I want the legs of the end to be a little bit more attached than they were looking like they were going to be. 
So I just, so I have like an inch or so here and an inch or so here on the sides when I add those pieces on. I've got a little piece here I'm gonna chop off. Okay, we'll see how we're coming. We don't have to stop and iron yet. We can just pop this other piece right on the side. So this is what I have so far. I'm gonna pop that other piece on the side. And I have a little piece here left. I'm just gonna cut that into a triangle right away piece is a little wonky and I'll have those later to put on corner pieces um, so that I can make the letters seem less blocky and have a little curve to them and I use all those triangles for that. Okay so here's what our end's starting to look like and I'm gonna trim this on the top a little bit. And now we're ready to add a top and a bottom to it. And I have those ready here already for us. Wait, I have some shorter pieces here. I might use those. Nope, that's too short. This one's not though. I was really excited. I had someone contact me via Facebook and um, on my Joe's Country Junctions page and she had gotten excited about the video tutorials I've been doing and she decided to try it and she sent me a picture of the letters that she's gotten done so far. It was so nice to see that um, the time and work and effort I've been putting into doing these videos has paid off and that somebody has benefited from them and has just jumped on board and has been doing them or making the letters. That's just awesome. Sometimes as a sometimes as a creator, I don't always know if what I think is interesting is something that someone else will think is interesting. So I sometimes don't have the confidence I should have uh, to like produce a video. I always feel like um, here I am just in my sewing room and I see people like Missouri Star and um, I don't know, other people that do videos and I think, oh man, their videos are so good. Who wants to watch a little video from Hokey Me sitting here in Northeast Iowa in my sewing room? And I don't have the fancy lighting and I don't have, you know, a fancy person to um, edit my videos. So when I get a compliment from a viewer and they say that they are making the blocks or doing the, the project that I'm doing, it just, it really makes me so excited because it, um, I don't know, it kind of validates my hokey little ideas in my hokey little sewing room in Northeast Iowa. So, okay, here I go. Um, here's our N. We have that one all done. So anyway, what I mean to say is thank you to anyone who is um, giving me a thumbs up or subscribing or going along with me on this journey to make this alphabet quilt for my grandson. Okay, I have some pieces kind of pre-cut out because I was hoping that we can get maybe five letters done today. We'll see. And so I've got some pieces here. Um, the next letter we're going to do is an O and I've talked about easy letters and hard letters. O is high on the list of easy letters to do. So hopefully we can get this one done in no time. Okay. Here's what our O is going to look like in general, but I am going to add those little triangle pieces into the corners here to give the O a curve. And we're also going to be adding some out here to give this section a curve. So then, and we'll do that around all four corners so that our O has a little more shapeliness to it. So 
Okay, we're gonna start out as always working from the center. So to do that, we need to take that center rectangle and we need to put the corners on it. And so I'll be putting a corner on each one like this and I'm just gonna be pivoting my machine. And so I just sew one corner on and then I pull it out, lift up the presser foot and pull. And then I'm gonna take another corner, add it on the next side and sew a seam. I'm doing that again. Pull it, lifting, pulling, turning. Next corner. And then I have one more corner to do. Just pull and pivot. Or pop that corner on there and sew that one as well. So I'm going to trim. You should have something that looks like this. I've told you before, if it's hard, and I'm going to repeat it because it's, it's really important. If it's hard for you to just use a triangle piece and do it like this, you can put a whole square on the corner and just sew on the diagonal. That works perfectly well too. I just do this to kind of save a little bit of fabric. So I'm going to trim those corners off and trim the threads up and get ready for ironing. Sometimes after doing a harder letter, it's really exciting or fun just to do an easy letter like an O. So then now I have it looking like this after I've been trimming. And I'm going to iron those little triangles over. Okay, so now it looks like this, which is pretty wonky. And so again, I'm just gonna take the scissors and I'm gonna cut that so that that is squared up. That's pretty good. Okay, now if you're looking and we take this and we set that back into the center of our O, we can see what to do next. We'll add the top and the bottom onto the centerpiece. Okay, the top, the bottom's on. Now we're gonna put the top on. Then we'll iron. Some people iron after each step and I, if I have a section like I was sewing the bottom on and it doesn't, it, how do you wanna say? It doesn't interfere with my next seam. I just sew the next seam on before I iron because it just, I feel like it, saves a step in time that I'm not to the iron one more time. Not that that's a big deal at all, but okay, I'm trimming again. I'm so excited to be doing this video because we're going to be over half today. I was excited last week because we were at half and now I'm excited again this week because we're over half. So now we have the center with the top and bottom on and I'm going to take a side piece and put a side piece on. So there. Okay, without ironing again, I'm just going to add that other side because the previously sewn seam doesn't interfere with the seam that I'm going to currently sew. Today is... October 20th, 2022, and it happens to be my son-in-law's birthday. And he is spending his birthday in the field in the combine because he is a farmer. <laughs> and that's what farmers do this time of year. Okay, so here we have what is the start of our O, but these corners are really blocky. And some people, if you want that look, you can keep that look. I don't personally like that look. So I am going to put corners onto here so it's gonna look more like that. And to do that, 
I'm going to pull this over here can you, so you can see. I flipped that. I put the piece on there like that, and then I sew from there to here. And I'm going to do that on each one of the corners, just like I did for the center section. To kind of save time, and I suggest you doing this as well, not just for me for filming, I do like to have a little... I got a little pile right here of already pre-cut triangles. And so it makes it a little bit easier. Oh, I didn't do that the way I typically do it. That's okay. I'm gonna add a corner. I'm going back to my pivot method thing I did before and just add the corners on. And I don't, as I've said before, I don't worry about, um, this quilt is really eclectic and I don't worry about whether fabrics match really or not. I kind of pick a color scheme like for this. This has blue, yellow, and red, and then the background. And when I made another one, I added green. One time I made one for my granddaughter. And that one was made out of all pastels. So it's still, I made it out of men's shirts, but I had to do some hunting and I found some pastel colored ones. And the main theme of that one is the color purple. So I have it like this and I'm gonna trim those corners and the threads like I previously did. I do highly recommend if you're doing this to have a nice, good scissors because the scissors I have right now is kind of crappy. Um, it's fine for clipping a thread, but it's not the best for fabric, but it's what's here. So I'm just going to go with it. I'm ironing those corners out. And now I'm going to have, whoops, something like this. So I'm going to trim again and then I'll be adding those uh, border pieces to it. Almost done. It doesn't matter however you do it, like um, you can decide that you want this side thinner and you can just chop part of the red off too. It doesn't matter at all however you want to do it. Um, it's like this is the anything goes type quilt. And so you can just cut and do things however you want. Okay, I've got one section onto this. And I'm gonna add this piece to the top. Okay, so I have those pieces ironed or sewn on. Now I'm gonna iron them. And I've told you in a previous video that I always add one piece and I add that to the, oh, let me think, what is that, the right side of each letter. And so that way when I connect the letters, there's a spacer because I don't need a spacer between all of the letters. I just, on each side of the letter, I just need a spacer on one side of the letter. So I'm going to use this big wider piece. This is wider than I normally use, but that's totally okay because I like to do different widths so that it kind of changes the look and lets my wonkiness shine. Okay, that was a long strip. We're almost done with our O, and then we can move on to a P. Okay, this one is going to end up having a lot that needs to be trimmed down on it once we get um, to the portion where we trim down. So we have an N and an O, and you can see that they're different heights. That's totally okay. We're going to trim those later when we get going. So, okay, we have N, O, and now we have to do something for a P. I'm going to grab some fabric I have over here and just 
start cutting. And we'll put, I got a long strip on the side. Um, trying to decide how big of a piece I need for the center of that pea. I think this might be better. It's kind of freeing to do a quilt like this after you've been doing a quilt that was like more intense piecing, just because, I don't know, it's kind of nice to not have to worry and fuss about everything being perfect. At least that's how I feel about it. I'm still thinking here as I go. I'm going to cut a little bit off this. It's a little bit too tall, I think. Okay. So a P is like a pretty easy letter again, but um, you have, it's someone you have to think about. So here's the real basic rough form. And again, we're going to go through and we're going to put... Um, on the set, the center section of the P, we'll put those uh, here. They're stuck together. We'll put the triangle corners on these two sides, but this side will be left straight. So two of the sides are going to put the two triangle pieces on, and then when as we get done, we'll put the white triangles on these sub corners. So we're going to start with that by putting those white corners on because, like I always say, we work from the inside out. Do that little pivot method thing I do. Okay. Okay, the first part of the P is out. We're cruising along with pretty good time. Um, I never know how many letters I can get done in the allotted time I have to um, sit and sew letters. So I'm always happy if time goes by and we're getting letters made at a good clip. I watch a lot of floss tube videos, which are cross-stitch related. And when I watch those, I like videos to be, I don't know, between 45 minutes and an hour, just like a longer episode of a crime show or something. I kind of like my videos to be that long. So that's what I'm aiming for. So here the center section is done. We're going to add this piece and this piece on next, the two red pieces. I think this is a hard um, thing for people who are very worried about seam allowances and stuff like that, and who like things to be super precise. I don't, I think that sewing in this type of method is probably hard for them because they're so used to things being, needing to be so accurate and precise. And me, I am a, a fudger. I don't know a better word for it. I just, do what I have to do to make the block be the size it needs to be. I am not super picky about seam allowances. I'm not, I, I learned to tug and pull. I learned to rip out when I need to. Um, I think that that just, it's just easier for me to not get too worried about it. So when I do a quilt like this, I, I'm just totally in my element because I don't have to worry about things matching perfectly because I always have my scissor and I always have a rotary cutter and I can just whack off a piece. And it just makes me feel happy to just have a free um, session of sewing that I can do what I want to do and, and not have to worry at this point that things be super precise and accurate. 
if you've tried making a block like this, I'm sure you'll probably agree that there's something just super freeing about grabbing your scissors and lopping what's wrong off. <laughs> okay, we're getting closer on our P. Okay, so here's our top section of the P. So now we wanna keep rounded corners on the top section. So I have two triangles here. I'm gonna put one triangle up here and one triangle is gonna go down here. But to do that, remember we have to flip them over like this and sew them that way. And so that's what I'm gonna be doing next. This, the way we made this top of the P is the exact same way that we'll be making the top of the letter R. So if you're making these at home and you wanna do two at once, um, that's a great idea. You could just do the top of the P and the top of the R at the same time. Chop these corners off. Okay, then we'll iron. Okay, so here we have the top of the P. And I have a piece here I'm gonna add. And I'm not, I think I want that to be deeper. So I'm gonna grab a different piece instead. And that's, this is what I love about this because my piece I previously had wasn't very long right here. And so I wanted a piece that was a little longer, so I just cut a new one. And I cut it that quick and that easy. Okay, we're gonna run this through the iron. And this is what we have. And we're gonna attach this piece to the P and then we're gonna have another letter really close to finish. We'll have to add uh, top and bottom borders on it or background fabric on it. Um, this is going really well so far. I'm so excited because some harder letters are coming up like an S. Admittedly, in the past when I've made a quilt like this, I've like saved the S till the end because they, they make me nervous. <laughs> okay, so here's the P. And we're gonna add a top and a bottom to it. And I should be taking my own advice to not worry about it because we can always, we can always cut it down or build it up. So I shouldn't fret about it. And I definitely shouldn't fret about it on camera when all of you who are new to this are learning because I don't want you to be fretting about making a S. So I do know one thing for sure. When the S is done, I'm going to be doing a big woohoo. So if you have headphones on, that's your warning. <laughs> but I shouldn't be worrying about a S yet because we have a P to contend with first. And this is a little tall already. I'm just gonna cut this off. Okay, and this is pretty wonky along the edge. I'm gonna cut this off. Just to kind of straighten it up a little bit. So we have a P this far and I'm gonna add the spacer to this side. In the past, I've like not added spacers till the very end when I was all done making the letters, but I kind of started, um, doing that as I go now. Okay. Okay. With that, it looks like we're close to having a P done. And here's our P. So we have 
um, N-O-P. So next up is Q. Um, Q is kind of a tricky letter as well. And we'll just jump in and do it and not fret about it. <laughs> so uh, I'm trying to decide. So here will be our center rectangle. And we're going to need some side pieces and tops and bottoms. I'm just doing some quick little fake measuring. I always try to cut a little bit bigger so I don't have to worry about it being too small. I'd always rather have it be too big or than too small. Okay. Hmm. Now we have to decide how we're going to manage that, the part of the queue. So I have this so far, which is much like an O, but a Q has a little piece that goes through there like this. So we got to think about how I'm going to do that. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to chop this corner off. You can see I chopped it off. And I'm going to take a small piece like this. I wonder if that will work. Well, I think I'm going to do this. See if that will work. Okay, I don't mind this idea. So I'm going to take a piece that looks like this. You can see I cut it with a right angle corner on the bottom. So I'm going to set that in there like that and I'm going to add a white piece here and a white triangle there. And we're gonna see what happens and if that was a good idea or not. And remember, we can try any of this, and if it doesn't work, it's no big deal. Because we're only dealing with these tiny scraps. It's not like we have a lot of money invested into yards of fabric, so it's going to be a big deal if it doesn't work or not. So we're just going to go with the flow. Cross our fingers and hope it works. Okay, so... Onto that piece, I added it onto like this. We're going to iron this. And, okay, use your imagination. That could probably go in the center, something like that. I'm content with that. Okay, so I'm going to add this onto there. And it's really way too big for the size that we need at this point. Because you can see it's like grossly too big and it's way overlapping, but that doesn't matter. We're gonna run it through the machine. And then after that, we'll trim it down. I'm gonna iron it. Okay, and so this is what we have. And I am going to square it up Okay, I'm pretty happy with how that looks. And so that is going to go into the center of the queue, kind of like this. It'll get better as we go, so don't freak out yet. And so now I'm gonna add corners onto one, two, three sides here to round them off. How we're going to do the outside yet, I really don't know. We'll just do it as we go to get the rest of that line of the queue into the outer part of the circle that we're making. Okay, I've got one more here. Oops. There. I'm going to add this one. Oh, 
my thread's kind of goofy. Okay, I have it out of the machine. Now I'm gonna trim and trim the threads and then we'll iron and trim again. We'll see how we're liking the plan to make this cue. Okay, I'm trimming again. Whoops, I didn't trim the best. Oh, and I didn't trim the under pieces. Ah, I'm losing it. Okay, we'll pop that into the center of our queue and see what you think. Okay, is it starting to look more like a queue? It's pretty rough yet, but we'll get better at it. Okay, remember working from the center out, we're gonna put this and we're gonna sew the top and we're gonna sew the bottom piece onto this. Um, it'll start looking more and more like a queue all the time. I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> So many of these letters build on themselves like I told you before like if you're making a P that what you learn when you make the P you'll need that again for when you make the R and so I really like that about it and even though these videos I'm doing them in alphabetical order you might not want to construct your letters in alphabetical order depending on how confident you feel and so I've said this a little bit before too you might want to start with an I or an H and then work to an E. As you do more letters, it gets easier and easier. And that's one thing I love about doing this. And later on, you'll realize that some of the skills that you learn to make an N, you're gonna use those same skills to make a Z. You're just gonna turn it side or you know, turn the N on its side to kind of get a Z. And so skills, letters build on letters. So whatever you do, don't try, don't try this Q as your first letter. Try the O first. Okay. Almost getting ready to show you the next step. Okay, now you can see we have a Q. I'm gonna lay it on here so you can see it a little better. So we're gonna round the corners here, here, and here. And then now we gotta come up with an idea, probably something similar to what we did before and do that right here. And so I'm gonna first round the other corners because I'm gonna build myself some confidence. <laughs> Um, oh, my machine doesn't want to, yeah, it's acting up a little bit. I think this little, my little thread keeper guy got caught in there. Oh, there. Okay, now we're ready to go again. Okay, adding corners. I'm doing the lift up the presser foot and pivot again. Oops, I had two pieces. Okay, we're gonna take that, well, I forgot to run that through. I probably need a new. I keep a little thing and run it under the presser foot in between blocks or in between adding pieces to the blocks so then I don't have to deal with the threads and the machine come, becoming unthreaded which makes it hard when that happens oh okay I'm going to show you something that happened see how this one just got all wonky so I could cut that off if I wanted or I can just take another piece of fabric 
and I can just add that to it. And that's what I'm going to do. Because I've told you before, this is kind of like an anything goes kind of project and we're going to let anything go. Okay, I'll trim that, press that over. And so now this just has a corner that's going to look like that and it's totally okay. Um, in the scheme of the quilt, you're not going to notice and it doesn't matter anyway, even if you do, because the whole quilt is wonky. So it doesn't matter if another section of it is wonky. Okay, so now we have this and what we're going to do is we're going to take and I'm just going to I'm just gonna lop off that corner. And now we need to create a new corner for that quilt. So um, last time I'm trying to see how, I think this section will work. This is probably a pretty close width. And if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter. Um, I remember how I added these pieces on. Okay, I think like this. I got another triangle. I think I need a bigger one. I might have to cut some more triangles. I keep picking them up and putting them down because they're not quite big enough. This is another situation I'd rather have them too big and cut them down than too small and can I add. Okay, so now I have, I've sewn this together like this. So this is a triangle on each side of a little rectangle. And I think I'm gonna try to line this up so it will go right there and see if that's gonna help us make it something that looks like a Q. And so I'm just gonna flip it over like I flipped it over like this, tried to kind of line it up mostly with the previous stitching that I can see here on the back. And so I kind of have that lined up pretty good and then I'm just gonna sew that on. Some of the more complicated letters like this Q um, and adding that piece. I've done it different every time I've made a set of letters and just trying to find a way that I like it. And eventually, maybe I'll get one that I really love, <laughs> a method that I really love, I don't know. Um, so this is kind of what I have. It's kind of a wonky cue. I need to put something on the corner here to um, cover up the Oh, the, that red doesn't go all the way to the corner. So I'm just going to put a triangle on that corner. And it's going to make it look a little bit even wonkier, but that's totally okay. Okay, I'm going to trim and then I'll show you where the cue is at. Right now this looks a little awkward, but we're gonna add a top and bottom and that'll look better on the top and bottom. So, okay, I need to find a top piece and a bottom piece. Okay, that'll be a side piece because that's really long. This could work as a top piece. I think I need some ironing though. It is super handy to have an iron close when you do this. I would hate to try to make a quilt like this without an iron um, right next to you. Okay, we have a top. Now we need a bottom. 
Oh, that one's not quite big enough. Oh, that one's not quite big enough. I seem to have a trend going on that I find keep picking up ones that aren't big enough. Oh, there. That'll be big enough, but it's... Hmm. I just can't figure out find a piece. Okay, here, this one for sure is big enough. I don't know if you can hear in the background. There's a lot of chainsaws running in town, and I think a lot of people are trying to get things done before the weather gets bad. Um, in Northeast Iowa, we could get a snow anytime. Um, usually we don't have a snow that sticks to the ground this early in the year and stays, but we can get a snow. Um, we probably don't have, typically we don't have real snow that sticks to the ground until December. Sometimes we get it in November, but quite often if we do get snow in October or November, the snow melts right away. Or it stays for a couple days. But there have been years that that hasn't held true too, but it's been a while. Okay. She's kind of wonky, but there's our cue, and I'm content with it. So right now we have uh, four letters made, and it is we're 46 minutes into the video. I think I'm going to try to squeeze in an R yet too. Um, I'd really like to get keep working on these letters, and if we don't keep doing knocking one out, then we won't keep getting them done. So I'm going to prep everything and get us ready to do the letter R. We've been kind of on a roll and doing pretty good with it, so I'm not too worried that we can't knock one out fairly quickly. Okay, I got a square for the center and I have a rectangle on the top and bottom because we're gonna do that upper uh, kind of curved portion of the R first. And we need a long side piece. Okay. And then we got to figure out how to do what I call the kick, which is the diagonal that comes off the R. And so I am thinking that if we use our knowledge that we got from making the letter N and we took a square and we cut that down or we took a rectangle and cut that down on the diagonal I think we can do a similar thing only this time we'll use a little bit more of a square style than a rectangle we'll see if that'll work so here I have my um, piece and this is much bigger than we need but like I've told you before I like it bigger rather than smaller and so now I cut it on the diagonal and we'll put a piece inside there and that will be the part that comes down from the R. I, when I did childcare and was trying to explain to kids what that was, I used to call it the kick. And I don't know why I made that up, but I did. So and remember I told you that we always want that when we do anything on the diagonal to make the pieces, the red piece, extra long. So here's what our R is looking like right now. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to round these two corners. Um, and I'll do that first by putting the red triangles on there. I've had people ask about how I feel about using red and if it runs and how do I wash red. Um, I 
don't worry about it and I just put color catchers in. I put like six color catchers into the load when I wash it. And if the color catchers come out um, that they're pink, then I rewash it without dry. Re, re, I rewash the quilt without drying it. And then I um, put a new batch of color catchers in. So here we are, we're getting a start on that R. I've got those pieces rounded. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna work this top section first and then we'll come down and do that next section. And I keep washing the quilt with color catcher using like five at a time, five or six at a time until the color catchers are clean and not faded out or that color has bled into them. And then once I get to that portion, then I dry the quilt. So far, um, I've not had any problems. Um, this is Gannon's quilt and Gannon is three and he has, um, you know, done all the fun things that kids do with quilts. He's wiped his nose on it and he's puked on it and he's probably pottied on it and <laughs> all of the things that kids do. And the quilt is fine and it hasn't ran. So I think um, it has worked out just fine. I would suggest not... Um, using a red fabric that you bought in the 60s and because those weren't as color safe. But if you're using current red fabric, I think you'll be fine. Okay, so here we have the R started. This top section is all sewn together, but I'm gonna round that corner and I'm gonna round this corner before I go on and start the bottom. I'm running out of corners. So if we get this R done, we're going to start out our next session with that dreaded S I don't want to make. <laughs> oh. But then right on the heels, we have some easier letters like U and T. I've had an overwhelming response from people that they want me to show how to do some of these, the center sections like the churn dash and the star block and the flying geese. I will do that after we finish the letters. And so here's that top section of the R. And so now I think we can go down and we can do the bottom section of the R. And I'm going to start out by laying this on the red piece like this, making sure that there's tail on each end. Okay, I have one side sewn down. So now I have, I want to put that back down there to make sure I am thinking that it's on the right angle so that that looks right. And then I want to try to flip this piece over so it looks like it's going to make a square with the pieces I've already sewn. You can see how I said that the tails stick out further and how it's important to, because if we wouldn't have, like when we cut this right here, um, that wouldn't have worked. And we would, and this way we have plenty being that we made that red piece extra long. Okay, I'm gonna pop that off. I'm gonna do just a little trimming here.
Okay. Right now, when I put these together, you can see that this is much wider than this is. So I have an option. I could put another piece of fabric right here and then add it on, or I could sew them together and then we'll end up lobbing off this section. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add the little bit of piece up here, but you can do it either way that you want. And um, this is just an easy way to get, um, to, this is just a way that you can make a decision for yourself as you're making this quilt and um, make it however you want. Because with most of these letters, there's not one right way to make them. Okay, so I just put a skinny piece on the side of that. So now it looks more like this. But I didn't do that now until the end because I didn't see I needed that before. So this is kind of more how our R is gonna look. Being I added that little piece on the side, then I'll add this bottom piece to the top piece. So now I have this much, and then we can add that to the other part of the R. This one seems like it's extra tall, and I think I'm gonna lob off a little bit off the bottom. up this top a little bit. So you can see there's the R. And you see what I mean how it seems a little tall? I might just, I think I'm going to take and just trim just a little bit right off the bottom here. And so my R is going to be more like that. I only took, oh, probably three-fourths of an inch off maybe, but I could see that my R was quite a lot taller than like my Q, which is okay, but it was even taller before than the Q, and I don't want it like super, super tall. I'm going to find some narrow pieces here to add to the top and bottom. Oops, just like that, I'm out of thread. We were so close to being done before I got out of thread, but here we go. I don't love changing the bobbin on this machine. Um, oh, I guess I wasn't out of thread. I just, I'm gonna switch bobbins anyway. Because I always have to remind myself on this machine, the bobbin needs to turn counterclockwise. And I always put it in the wrong way first. <laughs> uh, once I get this quilt done, this machine needs a good, um, a good oiling and cleaning. And that's going to happen as soon as I'm done with this quilt. Oh, and this, hmm, I'm having a little trouble with my bobbin. I don't mind uh, cabinet machines. But the only thing, and I like that they're surface level. I like everything about that until it comes time to thread the bobbin for me to squeeze my big hands. Um, somehow or another, I got man hands. <laughs> I don't have feminine, delicate hands. I have man hands. And to get my little man fingers into the bottom of the bobbin, it just is never good. So... Okay, here's my piece. Now I'm gonna put a top on this. Okay, 
we're almost done with our R. I'm not even going to add a spacer here because it just naturally ended up as I sewed it. It actually has a natural spacer there already. And so for now, I'm just going to leave that as it is. I'm going to clip this thread off here on the side. And I'll give you a peek of the letters we got done today. Um, so we got N and then O, and then P, and then Q, and then R, and I'm gonna try to lay them all out here, see if I can get them on my board. So you can get a little reminder on what we worked on today. Okay, so we got five letters done, and here they all are. And I'm so happy that we got five done today. Um, I went a little longer than I normally do, but that R ended up being just a little bit trickier than it normally is. So we're at an hour and I'm going to leave you so you can go off and find a new YouTube to watch or um, maybe watch a movie with your family or just head to the sewing machine and make some letters. I'm so happy that you were able to join me in my sewing room today and Go along with me on my journey as I make a quilt for my grandson Anders and uh, just a little update on him. He was in the hospital last week at only three weeks old. He ended up with viral meningitis. He was in hospital for five days and he's home with us now and doing so much better. We're very thankful to the doctors and nurses who took care of him and helped him on his way so he could get back with his family. Um, it just reminds me all the time that I need to get going and get his quilt made because I really want him to have a little snuggle from his grandma. And uh, the best way for me to snuggle him when I'm not there is to have him have a quilt. So I'll leave you with that today and thanks for stopping by. And I hope to get a second video filmed this week so that we can get a bunch of letters done and hopefully get closer to the end of the alphabet. So thanks so much for joining me. Have a good day. Bye.